most of the visual effects that you see, you don't see them. And that's the point of visual effects. I mean, your, do, your job is done right when nobody notices that. It's, it's really, <laughs> it kind of mess with your mind. The point of visual effects is being able to tell a story, being able to create things and make you believe you're there. There is a place for everything. I mean, on Harry Potter, you know, there's, I mean, monsters, magic, and all that stuff that has to be created, that has to be fabricated, but that's part of the idea of the story. But a romantic comedy, it will probably have visual effects. Visual effects are in almost every story. My name is Juan Cabrera. I'm a colorist, stereographer, and VFX supervisor. I've been working in post-production for 20 years. Uh, I started as an animator, moved to visual effects, compositing, supervising. I've uh, written a book about uh, stereography, 3D shooting. Uh, this year has been busy. I mean, I've, um, I usually work both on like uh, big, big projects and small projects. I love to be able to help with, uh, with indie projects and maybe not huge budgets because it, I see you have it gives you a degree of freedom than sometimes on the big, big projects you don't have. Uh, as big projects go, I've, I've worked on uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, Transformers, Age of Extinction, I'm working on Star Wars now. Um, before that, I did a, a little bit of Amazing Spider-Man, Prometheus. There are two stages for visual effects. You have the creative stage and you have the technical stage. The creative stage is where you want to have to decide what you want to do. And on that stage, I would recommend you not to corner yourself in a point where you're working on a shot, just trying stuff, and then you're testing it on the other shots and it doesn't work. No, just keep it light. Just do a quick green screen, start testing your backgrounds and see if your story holds up with those backgrounds. They don't have to be properly placed. They don't have to be properly keyed. Just test your story. Once, you're, once you feel like you're going in the right direction, then start finessing, adjusting, etc., etc. Here I'm just doing color selections. So I'm just going to show you how your, your mask is going to look. I reset everything and then I can do a color pick. And just show the selection. And as you can see, I'm just selecting the very, very basics. My selection range is very narrow, but when you start broadening your selection, then you start being able to grab more stuff. All of this that you're seeing are artifacts of the compression from, um, from H.264, and sadly, you're gonna have to live with that, but uh, don't get too stressed out about that. We can tune the saturation to not pick not to saturate the colors, you can tweak your shadows, etc., etc. Then we can disadd just those green areas. That, that could be a, like a first step just to take it out. You can see that you have still have green spill in other areas, in the arm and whatnot, but we can take care of that later. You can see in the scope how we are taking all that, all that green. And you can also just multiply by the alpha just to see how how it will look. I mean, right now we're doing a very rough key, so don't don't look at it too hard. I just want to show you how. See, we can soften it a little bit, so it's a little bit better. And this will be a good way of kind of start testing your key. Now, one funny thing about green is that sometimes yellow looks a little bit green too. So you may want to tweak yellow a little bit as well, and then recover it back to red. So now this is looking better. We don't have green. Uh, you can see where you have the reflection areas. Here, you have two choices. You can choose to just keep them as a flat color reflection and don't think about it, or once you put a background here, you can think about, well, maybe it will be nice to see a little bit of that background reflected on this, or maybe blur the reflection. It depends on how much you want to complicate things, uh, but uh, you definitely have the option. Okay, so now our mask is more looking a little bit better. You can see where white is where it's solid, where it's not taking away color. Black is where it's taking all the color and all the gray, all the grays in between is different amounts of taking away color or making a hole. These are the kind of things that you may want to look at into making masks or doing different, different keys. So you can have a stronger key and a softer key. You can also tweak it, you can also tweak it here. Just make it a little bit more. Make a stronger key. So we can see it. 
Do it now. You can see the effects. Principally, if, if I put it in the, if I multiply it, you can see the effect on how we are recovering that, the body, the transparency. Between having hard edges or not having them, having softness or not having it, etc., etc. Visual effects can be very complicated, so I think it's also important to know what's important for this project and what are we going to be judging. Um, we understand, I mean, you're going to be getting H.264 footage, which is not the best quality to do a green screen at all. I mean, and we, we're not expecting to see perfect green screens, perfect keys. I mean, if you're able to pull a perfect key on H.264 footage, I will personally will give you a, a tour of Industrial Light and Magic, and I'll introduce you a few people, and you'll have a job, uh, job for the rest of your life. That's probably not going to be the case. I mean, you may get the job on Industrial Light and Magic, but not by pulling H.264 uh, green screens. So what do we want to see? We want to see a good approach on visual effects. What do I mean by a good approach? Um, there are many other things to compose a shot than just pulling a green screen. Is that what background are you picking? How are you handling the perspective of the shot? How are you handling the camera movement? Are you using it or not? Um, if you have a, if we're supposed to have a, a what can I say, like a big window where you're seeing the outside of a planet or the outside of an asteroid or or a city or whatever, if the perspective of your shot is different from the perspective of your window, then your shot is never going to work. Doesn't matter how well you do the the, the green screen key, it's never going to work. Um, if you have a light coming from the window that is bright and your background is dark, that shot is never going to work, etc., etc. And it's about not just execution of the green screen, especially let me put it the other way. It's not about the execution of the green screen. It's about what you put on that green screen to make that shot work. That's the important part. That's the creative and technical side that we will be uh, looking at. When it comes to other stages besides green screen, like uh, the creature, CG creation, or any of that, we want to see creativity. We want to see a creature that looks like a creature, a creature that feels like a creature. Hologram test, hello. We're going to have something like this, where it's like a It feels like a little bit and then you of course have to move it. Like since she's moving it. You probably have to track it now. The the thing about this is that tracking it is gonna be tricky because you cannot see it very well. Now one of the key things about tracking is that the fact that you're doing a green screen doesn't mean that you cannot go back to your old shot with the green and everything and just do it there if you see it better. Okay, so for example, we can just grab this thing and say, okay, let's take away these trackers, let's add another tracker, let's track this corner for example. The things that you don't want to see now is you don't want to see the hand, for example. Since she's grabbing it, you don't want the hand should not be in the way. I mean, you should not be seeing this area. We can just create a little mask. Tracking information of the position, we can just apply it again. 
That's the thing about tracking, you can apply it as many times as you want, once you have it. So now, tracking is not perfect, but now the hand that is supposed to be in front is in front. But at that point, imagine we wanted to make it like she touches it at that point. Is what you want to do. This is just done quickly, of course. And boom. Another important thing that you want to do is regarding your background, what we were talking before about camera tracking. If you have your background just sitting there, not moving with the camera, it looks as fake as it could look. I mean, you can see this is a quick mat. I haven't taken out, I haven't taken out the um, the tracking markers yet. All right. The moment you track it, the moment you track that camera motion to the camera motion in your set, it already feels much more there. I mean, it still needs work, but it doesn't feel as fake anymore. Even the reflection, even though it's not done right, because it should move the opposite direction, doesn't look too bad now. So just make sure that you do your right camera, the camera tracking is correct, etc., etc., just to give it believability. LA Post Fest. Create your story in post. Another one? LA Post Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the post, damn it. Yeah, exactly. Get out of the way. Do those what green screens. Where are you watching this? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, do those green screens. There's a lot of work to do. Go! <laughs> my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs>